Well, it certainly was a frightening wake-up call for people in the Ewing Place neighborhood. Shattered glass and busted windows, it's what's left of this car right here in Ewing Place. I'm no assertion, and coming up on This Is Arlington, you'll hear from frustrated residents. Plus, Red Wave. I want to thank the American people for the extraordinary honor of being elected your 47th president and your 45th president. Former President Trump, now the president-elect, dominating the swing states to seal a historic return to the White House. Find out how Trump was able to make a historic return to the White House and a look at how students here at Arlington made their voices be heard in this year's election. And it's bigger and better for shoppers here in Arlington. The excitement among many residents in town as the new Kroger opens its doors. And now from your local news source, this is Arlington Starts Now. I hope they catch you, because 15 cars in one morning is insanity. They finally were caught. Two people are now behind bars after a string of overnight car break-ins here at Arlington. Hello, and thank you for joining us for This is Arlington. I'm Sebastian Oliveros. And I'm Brooklyn Knight. Sheriff deputies got multiple reports of car break-ins in a neighborhood almost a mile from the town square, leaving residents frustrated. As no assertion reports, new information he's uncovered about the age of one of the suspects might surprise you. As many people were gearing up to gain an extra hour of sleep from daylight saving time, thieves were able to gain their way into multiple cars in Arlington. Sheriff's deputies say that they received nearly 30 reports of car break-ins in the town. Just around 4 a.m., deputies say that 33-year-old Marjorie Sugars and a 15-year-old broke into a silver Chevy Malibu off of Dallas Ridge Drive in the Ewing Place subdivision. When the owner came to her car, she was met with shattered glass and broken windows. Now she's without her iPad for college and out of hundreds of dollars. It's a similar story for senior Juliana Palazzola. She was staying at a friend's house in a different neighborhood when she too noticed her money was stolen, causing a big inconvenience for her. It like sucked. It was very unfortunate because I worked really hard for that money. Back here in the Ewing Place subdivision, sheriff's deputies say that another car was broken into near Oilfield Lane and Aubrey Ranch. This man, who did not want to be seen on camera for his safety, was awake when the thieves broke into his car. While his window was smashed, he's thankful things weren't worse. I was very angry because I was like, man, I'm going to have to spend $300 on this. I'm going to have to figure out how to do deal with all this. And then I realized, wait a minute. I'm okay, it was just a window. And security cameras like these are supposed to keep a watchful eye to the sky as these vehicle break-ins happened under the cover of darkness. However, residents are telling me that understandably, their sense of security is now shattered. I felt my safe is at my own house, but now I don't think I feel as safe as I usually did before. As the sound of leaves rustling across the street ushers in a new season and noise to this once quiet neighborhood, residents hope that now the consequences the suspects are facing will help usher in a change of heart. Follow the, what's right, follow what's in, uh, right in your heart, and just do what's the right thing. Reporting in Arlington, no assertion, this is Arlington. Thank you, Noah. We do want to note the Shelby County Sheriff's Office is not releasing the name of that 15-year-old suspect since he is a juvenile. Sugar's next court date is set for November 27th, and more charges are expected to be filed for both suspects. The rainy afternoon commute for drivers in Arlington on Election Day was held up after a vehicle ran off the road and drove into the pond. It happened around 3 near the intersection of Milton Wilson and Ivy Bluff Lane in the village at White Oaks neighborhood. Shelby County sheriffs and emergency crews were there on the scene trying to move that white Ford truck out of the pond. Eastbound traffic on Milton Wilson was diverted into the village at White Oaks neighborhood. Crews were able to pull the truck out of the pond. No word on the condition of that driver or the cause of that wreck, but wet weather is believed to have played a role. We're trying to just throw the whole freaking system in the trash at one time and, and start blow it all back up. Concerning comments by one Tennessee lawmaker on a proposed bill for school vouchers. This bill would take money away from Arlington High School and other public schools around the volunteer state. The bill failed in the Tennessee state legislature last session, but just recently, Governor Bill Lee said that, the, that he plans to reintroduce school vouchers for the upcoming legislative session for the new year.
This caused concern for many school board members in the state. They aired out those concerns at the, annual at the annual Tennessee School Board Association Convention at the Gaylord Opperland Hotel in Nashville. Del Viox is president of the association. This year, he made it his mission to put the power of public schools on full display. Our very own from Arlington took center stage like the AHS choir and JROTC participated in the general session. Arlington sc Middle School sixth grader Ava Kessel sung the national anthem and Student Council Vice President Abigail Cronow and our own No Assertion also made the trip up to Music City. School board members debated vouchers during the delegate assembly, hearing from others and taking action to help shape public education in Tennessee. Cameras aren't allowed inside of that meeting, but with all of the student participation in this event, VOX hopes to send a clear message to lawmakers. Politics has zero, zero place in public education. It should be an apolitical organization. It's all about the students. It is the most important institution for the future of this country and the world. Public education can completely change the trajectory of any student's life. And that makes it the most important thing that we do. Tennessee legislators will make the trip back to Nashville in January when the session reconvenes to discuss vouchers. In election news, Donald Trump has made history as the 47th President of the United States. This is the second time a president has won two non-consecutive terms in the Oval Office. Trump is now the oldest person elected to the White House, but with Trump now in office, how would Trump's agenda play out in Congress? This is Arlington's uh, No Assertion is back now and joins us in the studio and with a breakdown on key races. Noah? Well, Sebastian in Brooklyn, it will be easy for Trump's agenda to play out in Congress since it was a great night for Republicans around the country. Now, not only did their presidential candidate Donald Trump win the presidency, but now the party is control of the House and the Senate. Let's go ahead and take a look at those election results right here. If you look at the Electoral College map, it was easy for Trump to win. He had 312 electoral votes, with Harris at 226, with Trump winning most of the swing states. But let's look at how Tennessee played in the election. You can see it was an overwhelming majority of Tennessee that voted for Trump, with some of the major major cities in Memphis, uh, Nashville, and Davidson County, and then it was kind of close in some other cities like Knoxville and Chattanooga, but Haywood County in Tennessee went for Harris. Now another one of the big races that we've been watching is the Tennessee Senate race. You've been watching us for a while, you'll know about Gloria Johnson who was a part of the Tennessee Three, but Marsha Blackburn is the incumbent and she is winning for a second term. You can see right here she overwhelmingly won the majority of Tennessee. The results look similar to uh, Trump. Memphis went to Johnson, Nashville as well. You can the majority of Tennessee going to Blackburn. Now, no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, this election was historic. And as we've mentioned, President-elect Trump is now the oldest person elected and the second president to win two non-consecutive terms. But if Kamala Harris was elected, she would make history being the first woman elected to the office. And this history was not lost on voters as they cast at their ballot. Take a listen to why this election was so important to them. Uh, I cast my vote for Donald Trump today. And what was your reasoning? Um, I believe his economic policy is strong, and that's the issue that I'm most concerned about, so that was my main reason. I feel amazing. It's really a pleasure to be able to vote for my first time, and it's for a black woman. And it wasn't just adults making their voices heard in this year's election. Students here at Arlington High School were able to take part in the democratic process in a mock election. During lunch on election day, students casted their votes for president, senate, and the U.S. House. Our Alex Short sat in as people casted their votes and has the latest. I think it's a great opportunity for us to try something new. During lunch, students lined up at tables outside the cafeteria to cast their vote in the mock election. Even though most are too young to vote officially, they were excited to be able to voice their opinion for the future of the country. I think it helps us understand the importance of voting and how like our votes do have a say. Here at Arlington High School, the ballots have become digital, where now you can vote for the President of the United States, the United States Senate for Tennessee, and the United States House of Representatives in our district. The election was set up by U.S. government and history teacher Mark McDonald. He says it was a great way to show students how the voting system works and give them experience so when they are officially able to vote, they know how the system works. Uh, I think it's a good way to introduce the system to kids and let them feel like they're involved. And so when it comes time for them to vote, they already have experienced in a, in a way, and that way they are ready to go. 
Students are very thankful to get experience voting before they get to the real deal. For most, the next presidential election. Um, I think it's good. I think it'll give us a little bit of practice to like for when we can actually vote. I'm Alex Short for This Is Arlington. All right, students making their voices heard there, Alex, thanks. Now for seniors who haven't turned 18 yet, you'll have a chance to participate in the real thing in 2026. Seats in the U.S. Senate, House, as well as the State House and Senate will be up for grabs. Tennessee will also be electing a new governor. Brooklyn. Thank you, Noah. Well, the wait is finally over for shoppers here in Arlington. The new Kroger location has officially opened. It's been a long time coming for Arlington residents, nearly eight years. This is Arlington's Sophie McDermott took a trip to the new Kroger and spoke with shoppers about this long-awaited grocery store. The new Kroger in Arlington has been long awaited by residents since its first announcement of its construction in 2016. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's good. It took a long time to think about it. So we saw signs for it for years, but we're kind of excited it's out good now. The time for its doors to open came on October 23rd, where Arlington residents finally were able to see the inside and what they've been waiting eight years for. I, mean, I kind of think it was pointless in my fact, but now that I look at it and all, it's like I'm really happy it's built and stuff. I like it's so big, it's like really great. Shoppers are still becoming accustomed to the new Kroger and the layout changes compared to the old store. Uh, it's much bigger, 51 aisles. Uh, the old one was nice to zip in and out, but a lot of times they had limited shelf space, so much bigger store. Probably so far they've not been out of things as much as the other one has been. It's been a few weeks since it first opened and residents are happy to say it has become a part of their everyday lives for running errands and their grocery shopping. At the Arlington Kroger, alongside Ethan Barnes, I'm Sophie McDermott reporting for This is Arlington. Thank you, Sophie. The new Kroger off airline has nearly 20 gas pumps. The old Kroger gas station on Highway 70 is still open. No word yet on the old fuel center will remain open. You might not need to get your Starbucks red cup anymore. There's a new coffee shop in town. Scooter's Coffee opened October 28th. The drive through coffee shop serves a variety of coffee drinks along with different smoothies and pastries. It's open weekdays from 5.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. Brisket and beaver nugget lovers rejoice. Texas-based gas station chain Bucky's is just another step closer to becoming reality in the Mid-South. Crews broke ground on the new gas station in Galloway off the I-40 in Highway 7. 196 in Fayette County. The store will be 74,000 square feet with 126 gas pumps and more than 70 restrooms. It's expected to bring over 200 jobs to the area as the completion of Ford's Oval Blue Oval City to Stanton. This Bucky's location is slanted to open sometime in 2026. Awesome to one junior here at, our, here at AHS for winning awards for his school project. <clears throat> Abigail Cronow is Arlington High School's Student Council Vice President. As VP, she was in charge of raising money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation that helps grant wishes for terminally, terminally ill children. She and other members of the AHS Student Council made the trip to Orlando for the Southern Association of Student Council Convention. There, her Make-A-Wish project won second place for community service fundraising and first place for outstanding community service outreach. With the big awards her project received, Crow now hopes this will continue to have a major influence on the community and the world. Uh, seeing the wish granting getting that much recognition kind of really put into perspective just how big of a project it was, the impact that it made on that one family. And um, hopefully, coming from that, we'll be able to do bigger and better things with the make -A program. Hopefully, other schools will recognize that what we did was so great and that they might want to implement something like that. And for Arlington, hopefully, this just gets really big. As of right now, the Student Council is planning to grant another child's wish. Visit the Student Council's Instagram page for more details. Well, Thanksgiving is just right around the corner and we're asking the school what they know about the holiday. We'll put them next. We'll put them to the test next. And are you smarter than a fifth grader? But first, the AHS Theater Department just put on their first successful play of the school year. How you still have the chance to catch the Theater Department's play, stay with us. When I was
was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Back Tigers, Arlington High School's theater hosted a play this past week. It is the first one of the new school year. The play is called The Greek Mythology Olympiaganza, and it tells stories of ancient Greek mythology. Our Tanner Luckett attended one of the shows and has more on why this play was so special. AHS Theater amazed parents and students alike with their amazing performance of the Greek mythology at Olympia Ganja, November 7th through the 10th. Oh yes, my sister was in it and all her little friends. It's her senior year, so I love seeing it. The seats were packed and the crowds were large, filled with fellow thespians and supporting parents. We spoke with a few parents and guests to get a better insight on exactly what made the show worth attending. I truly enjoyed the play. Not what I expected. All I just heard was the title, so I didn't know what to expect, but very good. The play was a great time for all ages, bringing laughter and joy to the audience as the play went on. It was very enjoyable. It was funny. Uh, it, it, we had a good time. Not only are the plays entertaining, but they also help students find future careers. Let's take a look at why people think it's important to support the theater. It does a lot of work for the students and supports their, what they're doing and everything, and it gives them more opportunities to do more. The AHS Theater Department brought their A-game and showed us just how talented fine arts students can be. Well, I think that when um, there's so much talent, there's so much talent in high school, and you just never know where it's going to take these kids. So as parents, it's good for us to support our kids and then just have everybody come out because you just never know who knows who. You know, it's a network. Hey, I know somebody that was in that play when they were in 12th grade and then Look them up, you know, two years later, now they're on Broadway. You know, you just never know where it will take you. More often than not, fine arts can be overshadowed by other more popular things such as sports. Well, I believe so many other programs such as like athletics, like football and basketball get so overly hyped. The theater and fine arts department don't usually get that much recognition. So I'm hoping with the new administration and the new generation coming in, fine arts gets their moment, especially with their new building attached. That was our own Tanner Luckett reporting. The theater is far from done. This spring, they will be doing their rendition of The Addams Family. More details will be released on Canvas and on the morning announcements. Thanksgiving is just a few days away. Families will be flocking to the dinner table to enjoy a nice meal. But do many people know about the holiday? We sent out our Brandon Harrison and Jabari Ellis to see what people know about Thanksgiving in Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? What's going on, Tigers? Thanksgiving is just around the corner. So today, I want to give you a special edition of Are You Smarter Than the Fifth Grader? Thanksgiving edition. Let's get straight into it. Uh, what year is the first documented Thanksgiving? A, 1619, B, 1536, C, 1719, or D, 1691? 1691! <laughs> D. 1536. <laughs> I'm going with the first option, A. 
Number two, the most familiar Thanksgiving took place in 1621, but in which state? A, Boston, B, California, or C, New York? Boston. A. Mm, California. Concrete jungle where dreams are made of. New York. Which, <laughs> Which president made Thanksgiving a national holiday? A. Franklin Roosevelt. B. Abraham Lincoln. Or C. Thomas Jefferson. Roosevelt. A. Roosevelt. B. B, Abraham Lincoln. What type of food was served at the first Thanksgiving other than turkey? A, Italian food, B, Japanese food, or C, seafood? Well, C, assuming they were by ocean, I'm gonna go with seafood. B. Um, Italian food. Well, now that we know facts about the holiday, we went around the school to ask people what they enjoy the most about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. I'm Chandler Crawford reporting for Tiger Life, and today we're going to be asking people what their favorite Thanksgiving dish is. Uh, cinnamon apple beer bread because cinnamon and apples are the best combination known to man. Man, I love that fried turkey and some dressing. Dressing with gravy is like so good. It's I don't, I don't know how to explain it, it's just really good. Uh, sweet potato casserole, because I love sweets. Um, I like ham, like, you know, when they bring out the ham that they put in the, in the toaster and all that. It's really nice, it's really good. Uh, mashed potatoes, because it, it's just really good. Um, I like Brussels sprouts, just because they're my favorite. I just love, like, they're just simple and easy to make. Millions of Americans will be stuffing their face full of turkey and other foods for Thanksgiving. But we all know that a Thanksgiving meal wouldn't be complete without a dessert. Brooklyn and I decided to put our cooking skills to the test, making a pumpkin pie. But not everyone on This Is Arlington enjoyed our pie. All right. We are about to go get the stuff from Kroger. We just got the recipe from Granny. Yep. From and, and we also got some of the spices that she already had, so we didn't have to buy it. All we have to get is the, like, the pie crust pan thingy. Um, Evaporated milk and a big old pumpkin. No, <laughs> the uh, pumpkin, the can. The can, yeah. The can, let's get the it. crust, and the evaporated milk. Let's get it. Okay, let's see who can find the pumpkin first. Over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. The horse knows the way. We're gonna bring it to the class tomorrow and everyone's gonna try it and we're gonna get reviews. All right, guys, let's do a taste test. First, reveal the look bum, of the bum. pie. Oh, oh wow. That's pumpkin pie? <laughs> try it, try it. Is that even crap? Hold on, I just get in the specs this. Yeah, Cheers. Not, like the texture is weird, but it doesn't taste bad. This unseasoned. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> oh, pie! Oh, yeah, Brooke and Sebastian's. Oh well, let's get rid of that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Oh, I love pumpkin pie. Oh gosh! <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, Brooklyn, but I mean, I don't think Mr. Ashby liked that pie a whole lot. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> All right, guys, well, up next, we take a look ahead at the upcoming sports seasons and take a look back on football, volleyball, and soccer All coming up on This Is Arlington. It's here at Arlington Community Schools where we thrive on creativity. We take the scattered pieces to build something great. We work together to challenge ourselves and each other, defining who we are and who we want to be. We rely on technology to learn where we came from, to see where we're going. We adapt because we know 
there's a world of opportunity for all. We thrive under pressure to make our future great. We are Arlington. Think, create, achieve. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you out because only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, Assistant Smokey Bear, call me Papa Bear because I'm grilling up dinner. <laughs> you get it? Yes, good job. So, what should I do with all these coals? Don't just toss them out. Put them in a metal container because those embers can start a wildfire. I understand. The stakes are high. Ha, 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 ha. See, Smokey thinks I'm funny. And now, your This is Arlington Sports Report. As far as wrapping up, let's look back at the fall sports. First up, the varsity football team ended with a record of 4-6, and six, which is better than the previous season, with them only going 2-8. The soccer team finished with a record 11-4 in one tie, making them third in the district and 26 in the state. However, they would face a heartbreaking defeat, losing to the Carryville Dragons in the first round of the district tournament. And finally, the volleyball team finished with a record of 16-7, making them third in the district and 28th in the state. But unfortunately, this was not enough to make the playoffs. Now, looking forward Winter sports are ramp ramping up with the first basketball game for the Tigers coming up on November 22nd against Bolton High at home. The Lady Tigers had the first game against Bolton that same night. Now, let's take a closer look at the upcoming wrestling season. Women's wrestling is one of the fastest growing sports in the world and one of the newest at Arlington High School. Thanks to the boys wrestling team, Expensive equipment like the mat were already in place, making it far easier to start up the women's wrestling team. We're coming up on the beginning of the girls' wrestling team's third season at Arlington High School. In the past few weeks, the girls' wrestling team has already had one preseason tournament. And here's how the girls' wrestling team coach feels about how it went. You're going to win or you're going to learn. And uh, we did a lot of learning last Saturday. Despite what he describes as a lot of learning, Coach Pfeiffer is optimistic towards the rest of the girls' season. Wrestling. Taking a look now on a different sport, to win the Winter Guard team is assembling for this year's show. Winter Guard is a group of performers that take on a creative style show and compete against other schools. We spoke with one of the members of the Winter Guard to see what this exciting competition has to offer. I think you really get a built-in family where we spend a lot of time together, so we're there through the highs and lows, and um, you build a really good friend group. You also um, get to travel to different places to perform, and um, it's, it's pretty fun. I like spinning things, so. The Arlington softball team has come off a great season, going to state two times in a row now. To repay their hard work, the school has decided to award them with a new locker room right by the softball field. This new locker room will be connected to the dugout and will have a meeting room, coach's office, and batting cages. This is the first time the softball team has something this big built for them. The players are excited for the upcoming season and are ready to win it all. I'm really excited for this new locker room because um, in the past we've had to walk like for so long to get to our locker room and even more in the past we haven't even had a locker room on campus so like having that locker room attached to our dugout is just going to be amazing for the coaching staff and for the players as well. To come watch the season opener for the Lady Tigers, the game begins at 6 p.m. on November 22nd, and the boys' basketball tipping off at 7:30 on that same night. That's all for sports having around Arlington High School. And that does it for us here on This Is Arlington. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to tune in next time for more stories from Arlington High School in the community. While you're here, turn on post notifications to see when This Is Arlington comes out with another episode. We hope that you'll have a happy and safe Thanksgiving holiday. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.